Okay, monochromatic, what does that mean? Well, we know that mono means one. Okay, chromatic is color. So monochromatic means that we're using only one color. And I've had some examples we use monochromatic quite often when we're doing shading exercises and painting. And so, this is the still life that you guys have already drawn, but painted. Other examples that you can see. So you can see that it works in different colors. These were done in ultramarine, uh, phthalo blue, and then uh, probably crimson. And so, monochromatic simply means that we're using one color, but that's not unusual. How many of you have looked at a black and white photo? Everyone has. A black and white photo is monochromatic. If you were to depict that as a painting, you simply take black and using water to thin it out, you paint it that way. So let's look at some examples of monochromatic paintings. Okay, here's some examples of monochromatic paintings. You got violet, blue, vermilion, green, and this is probably a yellow ochre. And so uh, that works pretty well. So, but the trick is that you have to be able to thin your, your paints down with water so that you have a nice contrast in value. Now this is black and white. This is actually a very traditional Asian way of painting. And so they use an ink called Sumu ink, and Sumi ink, Sumi. And uh, they just water it down and they get their darks and their lights. Another example, bamboo. Now here is an eagle that's done in blue. So you've got your, your deepest colors here and here, there, and then other areas are nice uh, they define in lighter shades. Now this is not really monochromatic, which is one of the problems if you Google and you Google monochromatic, you're going to get a lot of things like this. This is not truly monochromatic because the blue in the beak and the orange around the eye. And so if you take out those two, yes, it would be monochromatic. Okay, two more images. White bottle and goblet in green. And here's a ballerina on her toe shoes. Hard to, for me to recognize what that was originally. This is back to that same artist. So these are close to being monochromatic. Once again, be careful if you start Googling monochromatic. You're going to be misled in a lot of places. So if you just take the black and the white, yes, it is monochromatic. Nice little piece here, cranes, uh, in a very watery feeling. You know, it looks like it's on a shoreline because you can see the reflections in the water. Now, once again, I want to warn you, this is not monochromatic. If you take the elephant, it's mostly monochromatic, but you can see some blacks in here, and then they, the background is black. I don't want to see blacks, I just want to see one color being thinned down. Now, this photograph, it, it's, they're laying on a background, so if you ignore the background, these are monochromatic, and they're done in a phthalo blue. Very, very nice. Nice little chapel here, so you can do some really nice little landscapes, monochromatic. I like that, I like their color choice. It's kind of a, a burnt orange, so it's a orangey brown that when thinned out, gets lighter and lighter. Once again, close to monochromatic, but they put a little bit of reds in it. So just be careful of that. 
Now this is monochromatic, really a nice landscape. I really like that. I like the texture of the paper, how it you know blends into the uh, to the composition. Another piece that's quite nice. Then in vermilion, you know your green. This probably was one of the things that inspired me to do my three related colors where I had the trees because I really like the design that comes from all the limbs crossing. Okay, monochromatic. You can even do portraits. This is monochromatic, very technical. So this would uh, come out of a botany book, biology book. Very much greater LA area. Nice tones. They picked a nice color to do it in. Kind of a sepia tone. And so it gives you kind of that older photographic feel. Now this is a self-portrait by Pablo Picasso. And it's done in blues. It's monochromatic. Actually, it's not. <laughs> There's a name on there. It's a portrait of Pablo Picasso, but not by pa Pablo Picasso. Not truly monochromatic because of the black nose. My first monochromatic painting. Don't know who that is, but it's a woodpecker, all done in red. So let's look at your projects here. So this is a sketch, you know, just an idea, very, very simple. The sketch transferred onto paper, watercolor paper. And we start with the sky and we use it, the water as a barrier to just get where we want to get. This, by the way, is simply a shadow. Okay. And then we start layering it down. Now remember in watercolors, you want to put the lighter colors down first and then build up with the darker colors. Okay, so now starting to work out in this area. We define the road there. So there's the road. A little bit of a dry brush technique to make it look a little gravel, you know, a little bit more like gravel. Okay, we're working on the shadows here and darkening the side over here. And then in the end, the posts all have a shadow on one side. There's also the hint of a hill over here. Okay, and darkened up here a little bit so it looks like uh, this drops down a little bit. So a monochromatic painting. So working with this assignment, if you're going to take an image off your computer, something that, once again, is an original photograph that you've done, make sure you print it in black and white because then they, that's part of the problem already solved for you. You know, what are the values? Because a black and white photo, once again, is a monochromatic. Now, you should have both of these sizes left in your portfolio, the larger size, the medium size, this is the medium size. This is the one that we're going to use for this project. It's basically seven by 11, okay? So um, think about a good composition. It can be a landscape like the one that I did for you. It can be a still life, you know, apples and books and things like that again. It can be any object. But find something that is interesting, something that has good contrast. Look at the contrast here. Very, very deep, deep blues. Very, very light, light blues. So that is what's going to make it really pop out and what's going to make it fairly successful for you. So find something that has good contrast, a good range of value, and use that as your subject matter to paint. It can be something out of your imagination, like the road that I did with the tree. It can be something that you're staring at, looking at, like a still life. Or it can be something that you create off of a personal photo. Good luck.